So, you guys, I'm so happy to have you guys here with me. Yes, Another sir. episode of the Practical Podcast. We're back, baby. Sovereign, sir, yes, sir. brand today. Sovereign. Shout There's out to an Sovereign. Awesome, awesome French liqueur they have called Vion. Yes. That's just in most of you guys' glasses. Right. Let's it's give a first little delicious. toast to this episode. <laughs> Let's guys, just please enjoy <laughs> this. Um, Connor's so hammer is with her, but take Where's her. Mine? You know what? The Bel Air Champagne. Give me a bottle. Well. I'll take the, said, bottle. Want the bottle. You, you want the bottle? bottle? Give me a bottle. Okay, Let's give me the bottle. You want the bottle. That's how we starting out with the bottle. I love it. This will be a good episode coming up here. Shout out to you. Shout out to Vion. 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 Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, we about to be lit. Oh, OG. That's good. There it goes. <laughs> we'll get you a cup here in a second here. In the meantime, in the meantime, please enjoy. This is starting out great. This is starting out great already. Bel Air by Rick Ross, Sovereign Brand. That's there you good. go. We all good to go, guys. Matter of fact, another little, if y'all don't mind. Yes. I'm not going too early, but. Oh, damn. Another little toast. Another little toast. Another shout out to Bel Air. Bel Air. Brand. We appreciate shout it. Shout out to Bel Air. Absolutely Thank love. Appreciate it. Let's Thank you. Mm. Mm. Do we, do we tap yeah. the, the, the best with champagne? One. No, I think oh, that's, that's what it's shot. That's for shot. shots only? Okay, okay, I'm tripping. So you take shots, you should tap the desk afterwards. You tap the desk, not champagne. Not much we have champagne for. Yeah. But any toast. Alcoholic taught me that. Alcoholic taught me that. You have to look each other in the eyes. <laughs> for the toast. It's seven years, bad luck. You guys don't know what? this. So who are looking at the eyes for y'all? You have to look everyone in the eyes when you do your toast. Yeah. Let's do that again. Let's do that again. Here we go again. All right, I got it. Look at the eye. 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 And we also have the close homeboy, Myron Jackson. m 2000 you also recognize him as. There yes, are sir. titles beneath, so make sure you follow everyone on this platform. Yes, sir. You guys, I'm happy to be here again. Me Chopping too. It up. New year. The new year, absolutely right. Yeah. We are here um, mm -hmm. having this podcast to let everyone know that we are real people. Yes. yes. So let's have real discussions. We right. exist. We yes. actually exist beyond the gym. Right. Mm -hmm. Big biceps, nice shoulders. Hey. Yes, we do have all that, but yeah. we also are humans. Yes. And I think talking and discussing what moves us <clears throat> or what bothers us or just our voice on different opinions, yes. it matters. It matters. Connect to our audience. Mm -hmm. Let's, uh, without further ado, wrap right into something real interesting. Well, hold on. First of all, can I say something? Please do. Connie, you just going to bust out the guns. The I guns. Oh, yeah, like, exactly. Like, you know, he got a t-shirt on, oh, sir. Listen. I got a hoodie on. What's up? I'm, I'm, I'm real calm. I'm real calm with the guns yeah. out. What's up? I follow all of you. <laughs> I come prepared. I, I took see. the jacket off. <laughs> I did push-ups in the parking lot. Let's oh, the push-up. And oh, don't forget, you, you, got, got, the, you got, got six, the resistance band. six, seven-inch heels on. Oh, I you did. came prepared. I didn't want to be like you patting me on my head. So, yes, <laughs> the girl has the big heels on All today. Right. So. I love it. And I, I still it. look tight. I love it. And I love it. It's, it lets everybody know that feminine energy is very much alive. Yes. With muscles of intent as well. Absolutely. What a great shining example. In fact, a big part of your gym really does promote all people to come in for health and wellness, mm -hmm. but it's a real head nod to introducing that professional woman or the stay-at-home mom to health and wellness. The name of your gym, please announce it, let everybody know. Yeah. RG Fitness in Peachtree City, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we'll definitely Shout be shooting out. content there. Yeah. Definitely a great please place come to be out. It's, it's a fun gym. It's a good gym, and it's for everyone to come in and find a comfortable place to be their strongest self. Yes. I let, me ask, let me ask you a question. PC Georgia, do they drive their golf carts to yes. the gym? <laughs> yeah, I, just, I, I love the park yes, cart. They do. do they yes. drive their golf carts? If you, if you, if you yes, know PC City, you know about the golf carts. They come in two wheel it. Golf carts. That's yes. dope. Yes. Wow. They, they got they got streets for golf carts. Yes. yes. Like just right on the backside. Kids, 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 kids yes. can drive it to school. Like it's for a golf course, not a they golf got, course. It's not a golf course. They yeah. literally the got three whole different city has trails just, yes. <laughs> trails just for golf course. Trails just for golf course. You go wherever you they need to go. They be out there. They be out there wheeling it. Uh, yeah. Straight up. Yes. Yeah. Bro, That's I, the only I, way to get drive on. Drive through them. They're gonna be like, wait a minute. Yeah. He's in the middle of the street. Wow. This golf cart. Yeah, the golf cart kind of puts you in the end game. Now, yeah. is there rank orders to golf carts on who's doing it and who ain't? Who got the best golf cart? Yeah, some of them got them like like I Cambridge. seen some of them. I they seen do a, have that. I seen a blacked out matted one. They you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I seen them. You they know? have really. Customization of your cart is a yeah. thing. Yeah. What yeah. You can have the big wheels and have it kind of like lifted yeah. up. Yeah. 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 Do, do, do drive through there. Oh my gosh, yeah. No, it's crazy. Make sure you drive through slow, though. Well, here's the thing, though. Teenagers, even, I shouldn't even say teenagers. You have like 10-year-olds. 
I'm sorry to bust on y'all, but you have like 10 year olds driving those golf carts. Uh, and so when you say they're going fast, you have to be careful, not of the grown ups, it's those kids. Yeah, they I got a 10 year old. And I'm not ready for her to be behind the wheel of anything right, exactly. at this point. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine what it's like having a community of them yeah. ripping and running around each other. Without yeah. a doubt. Yeah, they had to make the worst decisions. Yeah. It's so let me ask you a question about your gym, right? Mm -hmm. So can you take your shirt off in the gym? Absolutely. Really? Are you coming to the gym? I will come. Okay, if I come can on. Take my shirt. Mm -hmm. I'll just jump. Only change the shirt off. He's not joking. Only change the shirt off. That's not, that's not true. Andre sweats us out of five minutes. Somehow, this guy gets a pump in the first ten minutes. No idea how it works. My muscle connection. <laughs> you want to see out. the pump develop, I'm right? Out and out of it's out of nowhere. We're working out. Like, let's go. You, you know what I'm saying? Pumped up and sweating. Pumped up. How does this work? We just got here. I'm ready. You know what's interesting about that? Well, that to, to, to talk about the shirt off. Coming up, I really, I was the old guy before I got on social media. Okay. Where I would get online and shout out to Simeon Panda, uh, Mike Rasheed. Mm. I love you guys. You yeah. guys are like the gods of fitness. They are. I would cool. always say, why the hell do we have this shirt off every time they're in the gym? I never trained with my shirt off until I got on social media. Yeah, so it was, it was really a marketing tool where it's like you have to show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You kind of got a peacock a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. And they seemed to love it. So it was like, oh, okay. I understood yeah. now that I'm kind of inside this space. The space of so. a fitness influencer. But I, I, I was that old guy. I was like. They had their shirt yeah. off. But don't you guys don't feel understand. like when you do like take off just that smallest bit of material and you're watching your muscles that it helps improve your workout? Oh yeah, you yeah, whatever. Because like? sure. I like to see it. Yeah, I mean, sure. it's not for anyone else, but just for me. I'm in yeah. the mirror. I'm not being vain about it. I'm watching my tricep muscle engage. I wanna, yeah. I wanna see, you, you know, see. the actual right, right. movement work. So since we got you here on stage with us, though, I gotta ask you this much. Um, this might be a heavy question, but let's dive into it. I wanna hear the fan energy question here we go okay. Oof. in the gym the the gym clothing seems to be evolving mm. even more mm -hmm. and more and more um sometimes disappearing at a rapid pace <laughs> the same way you're admiring your pump yeah there's a stranger across the room yeah also admiring your pump that's his business what should be the For approach her to this <laughs> like, like i'm a man ultimately here and i'm working out yeah and i definitely have my own um uh, my own love but yeah. i'm still mm -hmm. a man and i'm innately going to see certain things yeah how does this part work? If That's anything? tricky. That's really tricky because you can see it from both sides of the, I guess, conversation. Mm -hmm. Whereas as a woman, I can only speak for a woman. As a woman, I'm going to go in there to get my workout mm -hmm. done. And if wearing a certain amount of clothing or lack of clothing helps me get in that workout, mm -hmm. then I should be comfortable wearing whatever that is. Sure. But on the other side of it, you know, you're going to have men there and we're not going to say that men can control themselves, you know, where they're looking and how they're reacting to that woman. You know, so as a woman, you have to be aware that there are men there and be respectful of that environment. But you should also be able to wear whatever you need to wear to get in that good workout. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of tricky. Um, mm -hmm. But I just I just feel like at the end of the day, it comes down to being respectful of that environment of right. yourself as well. I don't want men to look at me sexually when I'm working out. I'm just being honest. I don't want that type of energy. I'm there to get my workout in. I don't care. I'm not wearing makeup, my hair all fancy. And that's not to throw shade on those who do want mm -hmm. to do that. That's just my own personal preference. Right. But I mean, some you of just looking, looking to catch yeah, something. they're looking, looking to catch, catch something. something. So, so what exactly. is the sexual look then? Like, okay, you, you, okay, Myron, oh. MJ, yeah. you got a hit little, uh, good little bicep pump. Yeah, you in the mirror, you flex, you flex. You're watching that big old round bicep muscle. What happened now? Cool. Everyone else is like, oh man, look at that big old bicep. He doing <laughs> yeah. his thing. Right. Lady's in there working out herself. Right. She's in a little chest workout. Mm -hmm. Hit some legs. Yeah. She stops, looks in the mirror, and she look back at it. Yeah. yeah. She look back at it again. Everyone else in the gym also looks back Look at back it. At it. Right. <laughs> right. Nice pump. Nice, nice pump. pump. The glue Is pump. there an amount of like Seinfeld said it's the sun? You know it's there, but you couldn't stare at it? Um or mm, that's a great question because me personally, I, I don't care what a woman wears. Uh, because I'm so locked in my workout. Mm -hmm. I see it, cool, but it's not deterring me from what I'm focused on, yeah. specifically mm. whatever body part that I'm working on. So for me personally, I don't really care. My only issue is when women um, 
make those videos about guys being cringy or right. creepy or stalking. Yeah. Up, when you set up yourself to look a certain way and men are going to approach you, you got to kind of understand what comes along with that. Right. I'm not saying it's right or wrong or whatever you want to label it. All I'm saying is just be understanding what comes along mm -hmm. when you wear that type of clothing inside the gym. Everybody's like not, not like me or you or Ron or yourself where we are Focus, we're yeah. locked in. I don't care what's going on around yeah. me. I'm locked so locked in. But there's in my workout. to the gym, though. But there are some people, they can be distracted. They can be deterred from their goals and what they're focused on. So sometimes you have to be, as a woman, I feel, be mindful of that. But, hey, man, it, it, you, you, it's a free country. You do whatever you feel. My problem is do not. And shout out to Joey Swole for holding those women accountable <laughs> that make those videos, put them on TikTok and social media to try to shame men. For, for noticing looking or doing. noticing yeah. like, like look with this one young lady she had a whole video about a guy that was just staring at her i'm like jesus christ what do you want him to do <laughs> you know what i'm saying like that's when i feel like i have a problem with yeah him. outside of that you do what you do but be mindful what comes along with that and what you wear okay but mj yes ma'am because I've also seen men do the same thing where they'll have videos and they'll show women who are scantily clad or they're wearing whatever they're wearing yes. and they'll say, oh, she's an attention seeker and she's mm. just minding her own business. Mm. You, so <laughs> is it just leave people alone, period? Yes. And I, I, I will admit that it is somewhat of a double standard. You mm. don't usually see men that have a problem with that or they are uh, illuminate the attention mm -hmm. or the attention that another woman is trying to grab. So it is somewhat of a double standard. You don't see that too often, but you're right. I think is uh, even playing field. Everyone should mind their business and okay. do their thing, but we are human beings. We're filled with emotions and hormones right. and you don't know how people are going to react. So if you are a smart, intelligent individual mm -hmm. that is mature, you should know how to move and collect yourself and move accordingly. So if you come into my gym without a shirt yeah. on, yeah. I won't let anyone video you or film you. Oh, they can film all they want, baby. It's all good. <laughs> just, like, don't you know, just, just don't touch me. Especially when you're on that MJ3000 P workout. Hey, when oh, you are, when you're on that King Kong. Yeah, that King Kong. You know what I'm saying? It's a little different. Let me hear your opinion, man. As the actual gym owner of oh, Fineo. Oh, Fineo. <laughs> Fineo. Yo, you're the perfect right. man to yeah, ask about this. Males and females both, who the whole yeah. world is clamoring to see. And you're virtually almost like the principal because you own the gym. Yeah. What are you noticing? What are you seeing? Give me a story of what you have to govern I don't, by you being the ultimate principal of what's happening. I don't govern nothing when it comes to what they wear. I let them wear what they want to wear. Um, I'm used to it, man. Like, if you, you've been to my gym. You've been to my gym. Mm. And what comes in that gym and what they wear mm. is beyond right. what a lot of y'all <clears throat> seen. I mean, we talk about 10 times better looking than females at the best gyms in the world, Alpha Land. These girls is coming in here stacked. Yes tiniest shorts on but I've created a a principle or a brand where people see me and they kind of follow along so if I see like if they're in my gym wearing crazy stuff or whatever I kind of don't respond to it we just kind of keep mm -hmm. working out mm -hmm. and it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an effect that everybody's it, like literally minds their own business MJ comes mm -hmm. in there he's diesel he's rock he's crazy big nobody really pressing him because I've created that 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 character in my gym where it's like, yo, just come in here and work out. Yeah. Women don't get pressed in my gym. Men don't get pressed in my right. gym. Mm -hmm. Because we, like I said, we created that atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where you, you created come the here, standard. Yeah, I created mm -hmm. that standard when I first got there. Like, yo, we here to work out. And if you do act a certain way, I don't have no problem telling you about this stuff and mm -hmm. keep you on my gym. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the respect level has been established it, it, off top. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Do as exactly. you may, but do, do you want to say may. ultimately here there will be consequences exactly. from behavior that is exactly. unfair. And I said that standard from the jump. And mm -hmm. not me actually saying anything to anybody, but just the way I walk around. You or lead by example. I train um, nothing but females. Mm -hmm. And I look at these girls like, what's up? Come work out. I don't care what you got on. I don't care how you look. Yeah. And then ultimately they start coming in with raps and not caring about how they look because I'm not paying attention to you. Right. You like okay. Mr. Clark. For right. Me. Like, <laughs> like just, they start coming in with raps. All about business. Right. right. So um, it's just how you, how, I feel like, I like, um, I feel like how you set your the standard of your yeah. time yeah. Um, or where you're at, especially it always starts from the top and the top is me. Mm -hmm. And if they see how I act or how, how I react to things, then they'll be like, oh, okay, they don't, they don't play that out here. Super right. interesting. You know, beautiful so, women, but 
No, respect. <laughs> Beautiful man. Good. Good. Neo is not for the week. Neo is not for the week. Not performance for the week. Performance and visuals <laughs> on a whole nother <laughs> level. I have to ask this part then because we're so close to the question. I was watching your TMI um, Thursday. Oh, yes, I love it. Post. Yeah. Um, please, you guys, please, please, please follow her Instagram page. Rip Goddess Fitness. Mm -hmm. um, super interesting. But you have a TMI Thursday. And the I question do. you asked was about a young, excuse me, a young man wrote in or a man, I should say, wrote in to you mm -hmm. and wanted to hear your take. Mm -hmm. and you present it to the audience. Please give us the rundown of this question he had. I loved it. Uh, so he wrote in and they can pose their questions anonymously because oftentimes it's something that they feel embarrassed about. Okay. So he was in a workout group, uh, well-established. They, I guess they've been working out for a year or maybe even over a year. And he wanted to ask one of the girls in the group, this workout group, to go out. But he also felt like, I don't know if I should cross this line because just like you're saying, that environment is of just respect. We're just there to work out. But he was really interested in asking her out. Mm. So he was asking me and the community, should I do this? Mm. Or should I just respect that this is just work out friends? What do you guys think? Do you think that that's appropriate? And please, you guys, in the comment section, let us know what do you think. <laughs> is the gym an appropriate place to pick up on someone who you become familiar with? Pick up in a sense of ask on to a, a date or a possible romantic date. Brick Dog, please let me know. That's what right. is this? What is this space for? <laughs> is this a line being crossed? I mean, yeah, this is like, I, I, you know, I love this. This is, this is like a dating podcast. podcast right? <laughs> Here we go. I love to have these We're the love doctor. <laughs> all right, all right. We're in the gym. Here we go. Uh, I would say no. I say when it comes to approaching women in a gym, it's filled with so much toxicity when it comes to approaching women at times that I think you're safer just minding your business and mm. maybe approach her outside the gym because you never know what kind of response they get, you're gonna get. A lot of women, sometimes they have that, excuse my language, that fuck off face. You know what I'm saying? Don't talk to me, headphones on. You mm -hmm. can kind of tell by their body language if they're open to mm. communicate with you. So at least have a level of discernment of who and not to approach. Right. But as a whole, I would say no. I would stay away from that. I would, I mean, I'm, I'm, I am obviously, uh, 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 pro man, so I'm always going to say, let her approach you. You know what I'm saying? Do the work, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you'll find, because it's also, I guess, a dating strategy when it comes to that, even when it comes to all the beautiful women in your gym and other gyms where you ignore them, they want you more. They want you more. <laughs> <laughs> if you use that mentality, really? that's active. What's a super interesting series, though? So I got to kind of rewind back a little bit okay. here. And you guys, me and MJ are close friends. Yes. Denzel, it's Connie, my dog. We're all very close people here. So this is a pause moment, but it's not really. Right. You're an exceedingly attractive person. Yes. So you do attract many women mm -hmm. off rip. Yeah. You don't have to necessarily put your or cast your line to catch no. your fish. Right. They do, as you said, come towards you. Right. But to that guy, who might not be the biggest looker <laughs> or the greatest body, right? he might have to actually test the waters. He might, yes. So yes. so, so does he never cast his line? Because you can't come yes. up on a fish and didn't catch if you didn't cast your line. You are so he don't ask, you're saying he don't, don't get. cast your line in the gym. I'm saying just don't cast it in the gym. Mm -hmm. uh, let your work, and I'm always big on this, guys that struggle with dating and, and, and dealing with women, that, that, that conversation has been obviously highlighted over the last two years. Yeah. Uh, men are struggling when it comes to that. Uh, they, a majority of men are ignored. Most women don't want to date an ordinary, regular guy, and it's unfortunate. Um, so my response to that is, obviously, it's going to be very simplistic. Just be better. <laughs> Get yourself together physically, mm -hmm. mentally, emotionally, mm -hmm. and financially. And attract what you want. And attract mm -hmm. what you want. I and love then that. I think you avoid yeah. issues of women that maybe never lead with money, never lead with money, uh, we, we don't condone any simping. <laughs> the simping has don't, ruined the ecosystem. Buy, don't buy the booty. Yes, simping has ruined the ecosystem. <laughs> the for the real the ones. <laughs> right. For the real ones. But make yourself so valuable, so attractive, that you set the standard, as you should as a man, of what you want, in my opinion. Um, and I think it bodes weather for every both parties involved. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? I think the woman gets what she wants and the man gets what, what he wants. But when you are not fully whole, I think sometimes you can come off thirsty or desperate yeah. and you lead with yeah. the wrong things. Mm. Stand on what you are and who you are as a man. And those, those, all those things that you want, they tend to Should come to you. So put in the work. And, and, and another one other thing, I think as a man, you have to understand where you are in life. 
you can't, maybe you realize, because men, as we all know, we learn really early where we set when it comes to life. You're right. And you learn that through sports. You're right. In high You're school, right. you, you riding the bench. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to have to get better. I'm going to have to get money or I'm going to have right. to be smarter. So we know where we sit when it comes to the ecosystem. Mm. So with that being said, don't approach the baddest woman right. in the gym when you know you are nowhere near on her level in a sense. Yeah. So don't put yourself in a situation. And you, and you compete with a bunch of other dudes. Right. She's a bad and you compete with me, Ron, and, and Denzel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like it, 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 it's, it can be a problematic situation where your feelings are hurt and then you get online bashing women because you didn't have the level of discernment of where you are Stick in life. Stick to the rivers and the mm -hmm. lakes you're used to. Stick to where you're at in life. And I stay, stay in your lane. lane. I, I feel like I'm going to be killed. I don't know if I'm going to be killed by men or women. I don't know who I'm going to be killed with, with this conversation. Are you upset with me, Cardi? Please tell us. It's almost like it's shocking to me that I'm not a man, of course. I didn't know that men felt that way. It's not like giving that woman, you're not giving her the credit to look past that you know say they don't look like you guys they don't look like you guys and they're the quote-unquote average guy and he's just coming in with his earnest heart are you saying that the woman can't look past that and well, as a collective i think that that rank that that gives you this value and this value i think doesn't come from financial i mean i'm not going to do it but i'm just but i truly believe that the value that <laughs> i personally divide that a woman sees in someone and vice versa to a man towards a woman is going to come from what you're presenting so this guy makes me laugh a lot so that yes. guy says you know what he has a great character by way of comedy and she learns to like him because of that mm -hmm. beyond that he works really hard so mm -hmm. maybe that might buy him some points you know what i mean or maybe he's just a, a wholesome guy who, who has um a future perhaps in hand mm -hmm. these things might add value to who he is as a person right he has potential and she might give him a chance right but i think what mj is saying though is sometimes though there's an overarching obvious value that's given to some people and then from there there is more additional points to be accrued so if you're someone I hate so they have a rank. head start yeah they, they have, have a head start. and i hate to use a rank order of number system for yeah. people but if you had a visuals when it comes to a gym at least mm -hmm. you know what guy is going to be that elite that 10 has a few more options. Yeah, yeah. That 8 has a few more options. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you're someone who's new to this gym space, you better very well be good at something to something make them else. see. Yeah. Tell yes. her a joke, make yes. her laugh, yeah. be nice, get yeah. her some cold water, whatever you can do. But Ryan, get, you, but Ryan, you get know, her some most, cold most, water. <laughs> but, but hold on, but Ryan, you know, Consistently. listen, this is in 1960. Like mm -hmm. women, they, they, not, they, they, don't, they don't care about that in the beginning. They, Women are more, I've found that, and this is just my personal opinion, that women have evolved. They're also more visual creatures as well. Mm -hmm. they, they can look and see what they like. You know what I'm saying? You may not have to look like me or you, but they want a guy that maybe is uh, physically fit. You don't have to be extreme with it. But in control but, of your health. Yeah, control of your health so you can be around. You know what I mean? And they check in pockets. They check in pockets, without a doubt. So before you get to the comedy, well, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and trust me, I'm not well, blanketing all women and generalizing them at all, but there's something to be said that you have to have the visuals intact. Mm -hmm. They're looking. Women, one of the things, women are so smart and intelligent. They can look at your watch. They can look at your shoes. They can see how you carry yourself and mm -hmm. your energy, the way you walk, your chest up, head up. Mm -hmm. They notice all of those things. So is what I'm true? saying is... It's true. Yeah, so what I'm saying is, I love the aspect of, can he make me laugh? Yeah. It's, does he have a great personality? But sometimes those things aren't displayed in the gym. And that on initial media, visual. Or on, Disney, okay. or on dating sites. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I, I read an article that normal average guys struggle on dating sites because they may not have the aesthetics. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because... Mm -hmm. I'm basing it off of how you look. I don't know if you're profile, funny. I don't know. Right. I don't know if you're a cool guy. I don't know right. all of those different things. So sometimes it can be difficult for these guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I know they don't want to hear that. I don't have any other answers for you. I don't know. All I can say is just be better. Just make yourself more valuable in a sense where you can control what you control and you can get what you want. Mm -hmm. So DJ, please tell me then, you are a sitting duck. You are sitting don't in the middle me. of a super hot gym. No one's going to cancel it. You're a sitting duck in the middle of the gym and people can't help but see this, I'm 6'3", I look up at DJ Sill. 
DJ says he's 6'4". He's a liar. I'm he's 6'6". Six, 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 I never five. said that. I'm 6'6". Yeah. Six, six. <laughs> Sorry. He's yeah, six, sure. Six. I feel like I'm Kevin Hart's name. For sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Real talk. Did you notice, by the way, they said that only 2.9% of the population of men is over 6'2"? Yeah. Wow. 2.9% yeah. of the American But But the but majority of men, women want men over six feet. Which is an impossibility. Which is even ridiculous. Uh, we're talking about... I feel like I am representing for my entire gender. Okay. <laughs> it's right you. here. You got DJ, you. tell me, oh man. Is, 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 is this a place where courtship can happen? Do you see actual relationships being forged in the gym setting, in your gym? Absolutely. You see it happen I'm, to I, success. I, I, I do see it happen. Uh, to to somewhat success, not yeah. everybody, but um, for me, I just feel like if you're gonna do that in the gym, um, like he said, be respectful. Like most guys nowadays don't have game, so when mm. they shoot their shot, it's like, yo, what are you doing, bro? Learn <laughs> like like you know, if you're gonna shoot your shot at somebody, learn them, talk to them little little by little in the gym, yeah, and don't just try to shoot your shot just because talk you think they they look good. Yeah, talk to them like a human before you shoot that throw that cast out there, you ain't real nothing in it. You just, you know, throw it out there, you know, put the bait on it, you know, get it ready and prepped and yeah, 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 yeah. throw that cast out there. And then when you feel that bite, take it. But until I just feel like, it, I think it is disrespectful to just throw your shot out there, especially if a female's in there working out, going hard. Cause you go to Fineo, I'm, I'm gonna always talk about Fineo. Right. The girls in Fineo get it in. Yes, they get work. They, they, they work. Get, yeah, they, they really working they out. Work. They, they working and out. It's like, it's like, they don't care about the guys in there. Yeah. They get in and they leave. It's not. A, it's not a chill spot. Not a, we don't. Yeah. We don't lie to guy after they get in and leave. So, but everybody looks good at Fanam. Yeah, the guys look great too. All yeah. the guy, everybody look yeah. like it's like an influencer gym in a sense. Yeah, with, with regular people though. With regular with people. Regular nine to five. Everybody, right? everybody so, looks amazing in there. Um, so Everyone looks good at Archie Fitness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Shout out. If you're trying to see some beautiful people, of course, you want to go to RG Fitness. RG Fitness. As well as Fennel. Yeah, Fennel. Yeah, Fennel. Yeah, Fennel. Yeah, Fennel. Hey, there's room for places. everybody. I'm going to have two gym owners in here, <laughs> yes, man. Yes, it's room for all of us. Let me ask you guys one more thing in the same space, though. Um, and more so towards you, Connie. Well, no, that's all, actually. And it's more so about the TNT era, what I refer to it as. The TNT era was back in, back in my day. Yes. Uh, we're all over the age of 30. DJ just made it in. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, we're actually over 35 and he's still not in. <laughs> but the TNT era, it was chock full of masculine energy. Yes. And I say masculine in the sense of I appreciate masculinity. I am a man's man. It is not a bad word. It is not a pejorative. Right. Masculine man is a thing, just like I respect feminine energy. Mm -hmm. I love the both. They are a great balance to one another. <clears throat> Here's what I'm ranting on about, though. It was a it was a, an influx of mm -hmm. heroes we looked up to. Yes. Action Jackson. Yes. Chuck Norris. Yes. John claude oh, Van Damme. Oh. We saw explosions on TV. Yeah. We saw tons of men running around with their shirt off and bazookas in their hands. Yeah. yeah. Commando. Yeah. Commando style. Fighting for America. This yeah. is real masculine energy. It's beautiful. Protecting the country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The same way we feel like we're protecting our family. Mm -hmm. right. So it's just a hyper display of what we all feel within ourselves as men. Right. One of our first jobs is to protect our families. Without a doubt. Correct? Mm -hmm. With that being said, what happened to TV? Where's the TNT era? Oh, man. Guys, please tell us. No more Ladies, no more guys, please tell us. Y'all was forced to watch that. So on the media. <laughs> there is no more TV like yeah, that. Yeah, that was yeah. the worst, be it internet, be it your social streaming. Rigor, social network, yeah. streaming, so Netflix. Other, so many other things. Why is there an absence? Why is there a void of the display of pure masculine energy that drove us? I wanted to have big guns like Arnold. Right. He slapped, um... Yeah, actually, he had slapped uh, his partner's hand. Yeah, and he yeah, held yeah, in a real yeah. tight embrace. Apollo Creed, and they locked real yeah, tight. Yeah, yeah. I saw a big Oh my up. gosh, I remember that. I was like, <laughs> like that. Come on, let's you know do it. I mean? Let's do it. Let's do it. Just like this. Oh, oh you see that? Oh. Brotherly <laughs> love. Yeah. Mass. Oh, oh, let's go. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. It's still feminine though. I love it. Right. Nice. So what happened, man? Where is this masculine energy at? Is it being squashed? Is it not? It's not apparent anymore. Nah, I, 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 for me, like I said, I was, I was probably like. Three, four, five, <laughs> <time>. whatever. <laughs> know, like, you know, I'm, I'm a demolition man guy. That's when I started growing okay. up. Okay. But, well, but, um, yeah. but um, honestly, nigga. Blade. But honestly, Blade. um, I feel like women are evol evolving and kind of. I don't want to say they're taking over the the space of, you know, strong and you know, feminine as as a woman. I just feel like when it comes to men, we're not on a downfall, right? But women are going crazy when it comes to working out, showing their strength, 
deadlifting 315 for 10 times, what they couldn't do, what men, some of the men still can't do to this day. Okay. Um, and that's just really how I feel. Well, I with women around. stepping up there, mm -hmm. I can do it kind of deal, which has always been around. Yeah. You had Rosie the Riveter during, the, during, uh, during uh, World War II. Rosie mm -hmm. the Riveter was right. the iconic um, picture of a woman flexing her arm and bandana around yeah. her head. Mm -hmm. She was going to get into the action yeah. to help fight for her country. Yeah. So if she's stepping up her energy and her efforts, the man at the same time can do the same thing. Why exactly. is he not right. displaying the same energy of, hey, I'm a masculine man. <clears throat> You're stepping up also, Rosie the Riveter. Right. Me as a man, Sylvester so Stallone. Jean-Claude Van Damme, Eagle. the guys we looked up to, we <laughs> kept stepping up. Right. What happened to the testosterone levels of men? If they're not there, it seems to not be. Right. Is there any answers y'all can, can offer up to me as to what happened? I, my personal opinion, I, I think it's intentional. I mean, An intentional right? ploy by who? I, I don't want to sound like a, a conspiracy theory, but it does feel very intentional. Like. Um, I love women. I, I love the, the way they evolve. They're stronger. They're right. getting to more money. You know what I'm saying? They're doing wonderful things. And I applaud it because they're necessary. You, as a human race, everyone should evolve. Mm -hmm. uh, but I feel like at times they put, when, when you got uh, Angelita Jolie holding one, a shotgun with one hand, right. jumping out of a car and all of us a shot a shotgun, you can't do that. That's impossible. You know what I'm saying? In some of these roles, which is great, which is fine. I love it. I love to see it. But then the absent of like now all we have is the rock when you refer to the TNT. Masked with man. He's holding up for his own. It, 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 he's it, it, he's, it, it, he's the only one that I see. Himself. You know what I mean? And so I, I think it's a problem. And, I, and, to, and to like what I said earlier, men are struggling when it comes right. to certain things. When it comes to dating, the lack of masculinity, confidence. the lack of confidence and testosterone, it just is not there. Those films that you described, man, I grew up on those. Yeah. I, I didn't have a, a father figure in a household. But Big so, Trouble Little China, yeah, Big Trouble, Trouble Wheeler. That was me. I, I, I saw yeah. Arnold, yeah. when I saw Arnold in Commando, okay. he was coming down the hill <laughs> with a wife beater on, <laughs> with a log on his shoulder, walking down the hill, and I said, that's a that's man. A man. Yeah, Rambo, that's Rambo, what I want to look like, Rambo. Rambo was crazy. I was like, that's that's a man. So without that, because obviously, specifically in our community, we're absent of sometimes of a, 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 of a two-parent household. Mm. So those are the things that I had to lean on when it came to my masculinity. Mm. Because my mom, she worked two jobs. So mm -hmm. a lot of times it was just me and my brother, and I had to take care of him. So mm -hmm. we watched those films all day long. Pop culture influence was yeah. definitely in place. Without a doubt. So would you say that because we don't have the same pop culture, well, excuse me, the pop culture influence will always be in place. Popular yeah. just, pop culture means just that popular culture. Yeah. The pop culture of the 80s and 90s that helped to rear us yeah. had tons of examples of masculine energy. Yeah. I said a second ago, Sylvester Stallone, <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah. Blade, which was uh, Wesley Snipes. Snipes. These guys are great opportunities great. for us. So is it perhaps the fact that we shouldn't necessarily lean upon the media to show our boys oh. or give examples to women of what a man looks like? Is Gee. it perhaps the fact that we don't have those examples being set out there did, while we have a shortcoming? Listen. Connie, kind of, you're talking about the go ahead. Go ahead. Like, please, oh, please, please okay. listen. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. I have a clarifying question okay. because you guys are giving us physical manifestation of what oh. a man is. And you're saying, you know, Arnold and everybody with the big muscles okay. and but why does that define what a man in masculine energy is? Just on their physical? Great question. What about like a Cliff Huxtable? He was very understanding, emotionally intelligent man. He was masculine, though. He was You're masculine. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Does it, it really, necessarily, right. just right. yeah. so that, necessarily just have to be based on the physical appearance? Yes. So first of all, for the question, I guess is. what she's saying, and I'm not doing what they call mansplaining. Yeah. Except I'm asking you. Mansplaining. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> saying, I won't. What I'm asking you is. You're saying that we should define masculinity beyond yes. the physical attributes, yeah. the emotional intelligence of Cliff Huxtable. Yeah, you know his ability to lead but still be sensitive to the right. the three year old he had in hand. I think it just started to evolve, and that men didn't just have to be silent, don't cry, just show your muscles, and media did help in this. Just that understanding that strength also comes in the man that is sensitive and in tune with his emotions. Super valuable. I feel like you can have both. Super or valuable. Super valuable. There is can, can multiple I, definitions is of being, what is masculine energy. Is the balance perhaps being off kilter though? Whereby we don't have enough of the brawn 
along with the I, emotional sensitivity and intelligence? Possibly is. I do feel the, like that emotional it's kind of has, at this yes, point. is ahead of what we're seeing portrayed in media now and movies and all of that. Yeah. There's more focus on that sensitivity versus seeing The Rock. Yeah. yeah. We don't see that as often as we're seeing more of the sensitive man now. This is the value of having a yeah, woman on the podcast. Yeah, she's right. Can crazy. I can I can I speak to you? Can I stay? You're no, you are right. absolutely <laughs> she's right, bro. But then I can. I the only thing I would challenge you at. I would ask you this: Then why do so many women complain about the lack of masculinity? Mm. Because it's like you can't have both. I talk to women all the time. I was just recently on a podcast mm -hmm. where they use women use this new word, sassy. They calling guys sassy. Yeah, you know well. what I mean? The lack of masculinity. So it's like <laughs> you can't have. Both in yes. a sense, right? I agree. And 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 I'll tell you this, because I, I totally agree with you this. Arnold, Apollo Creed, uh, uh Sly, they shouldn't have been our heroes. Our fathers should have been our heroes. Mm -hmm. But they weren't there. Mm -hmm. So when I see Ron or I see or I see a uh, DJ or any guy on social media with their kids and their wife, mm -hmm. that's the way it's supposed to be. Your father. Is supposed to be your hero, not Absolutely. LeBron James. I love LeBron James, right. but your father is supposed to be your hero. First example, not LeBron, not Bo Jackson. I agree. But specifically in our community, that's all we had. Mm -hmm. So when you take that away, now what you got? A bunch of non-masculine, sassy men. Do so, you think so? Because you just tapped into something. So in our community for a very long time, decades and decades, our heroes, black men, would gravitate towards sports. You know, we didn't have doctors for a while. We didn't have engineers. We didn't have technology. We didn't have CEOs. But now we do, that's more common. So now maybe the heroes that we are looking at aren't just, just athletes. There's so many more heroes that we have that our young men can look yeah. up to. So maybe that has also kind of turned? Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. And I guess at this point in time here, we all know these specific examples that do exist, but will the machine or will that larger media presence highlight those examples as well? Um, as we said, I guess, as you were trying to, as you were summarizing a moment ago, in the TNT era, as I refer to it, we had a bunch of explosions and the men with the tank tops on and, and those were good and strong grips, yeah. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it showed a lot of examples of the physical brawn of masculinity mm -hmm. um, but it didn't show the other intelligible side that is mm. also needed to be a quote-unquote masculine man it's so much more to this to this diagram but i guess or to this to this pie so i guess to make sense of what you and and mj are both saying is i guess we just can't rely upon media to give us the proper examples because they're going to lead us askew every time. Well said. I love that. Well said. They're going to lead us astray every time. Yeah. It's going to go too far to the right well or too far to the left. Right. Perhaps the 80s went to the far right. Right. In 2020, unfortunate for the young men of today, it has gone too far to the left. And not just for the men, though. Yeah. Because I truly believe, though, that men... Well, I truly believe, though, that a, a father or that male figure in a in a young girl's life is going to be the first example that she needs to have. Mm. So while he is going to set an example for the young men to grow up and the blueprint where they should live, excuse me, the blueprint they should live their life by, mm -hmm. that actual girl is also watching. Mm -hmm. So that that there's a son, there's a daughter. Yeah. The son's following the blueprint mm -hmm. to being a man by yes. way of that man in their life. That daughter is also seeking and finding what she should look for when it's her time. Very right. true to find mm -hmm. that male figure or that male companion mm -hmm. in her world. No God. I think we're solving well world problems. Well we're said. Solving world problems. That was, that was, no, that was world said. problems here, man. President, wait, wait, uh, wait, 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 their complaints were, were the lack of masculinity. Mm -hmm. They were calling these guys soft and sassy. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't relegated to, to, to lifting weights. Yeah. He was just being a man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, but even then, the definition of a man, though, was already askew. Right. Because she sure. did not have a true man in her life to show her the Cliff Huxtable, right. who also worked out, who also protected and took care of his woman mm -hmm. right. with a soft hand. Right. So she can't define what a man is because she never knew a man. Right. At the same time, though, he can't be a man because he never seen a man. 
Wow. It's a lot of crime pop culture to do so. Yes. We're lost. Well said, yes. It's like, how do you know? I look good. My, my generation lost. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. so I look good. But, like, but, okay, so <laughs> let me ask you this. Is it the responsibility of a man to be in control of his own masculinity the way it's upon a woman to be in control of her own femininity? Regardless of whatever examples they have, you have to go out and find it. And Accountability is what you work just said. On it. You just said accountability. And I believe in accountability wholeheartedly. It's easier for some. Mm -hmm. DJ grew up with his dad right there. Yeah, I grew up sure. with my dad right there. Right. It's an easy blueprint in our lives. Yeah. You said your father wasn't there presently here. Right. So it wasn't an easy blueprint to simply Not follow. I just had to mimic the man who I saw. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, every easy. man that I saw, I was like, I, I was very observant. And you bounced around yeah. from Snoop Dogg to Dr. Dre to Sylvester yeah. Stallone to T.D. Jakes to whoever man yeah. you saw in your life as an example. Yes. Unfortunately here, there are many men because of the broken family who are, and women, who are looking to social media as it is now, yeah, yeah. or at one point in time, TV media, mm -hmm. to find examples of what a woman is and what a man is. Right. Unfortunate, and I don't know if there's a transition coming anytime soon. This is a really heavy one, you guys. And I don't it is. This is I'm not sure if I want to stay in the same space. We'll be here all day. We'll be here all, all day. day talking I got this question to you guys, the owners. You guys are all CEOs in your own right. Yes, sir. You guys are all the chief executive officers in your own business, right? Yes. Um, you guys weren't always here in this space. Mm -hmm. Please tell me, how did you get to where you're at first, Connie? Oh my God! This transformation. They know. Yes. They know you now. Yes. But please tell us, how did you arrive to where you are now? You're still working. Mm -hmm. But how did you arrive to where you are now? Where did you start? The transformation. The evolution of Connie Itchon. Well, do you mean with actually owning the gym the or the space brand? Where right now, your brand, your gym. How have you identified the most at this point? Well, the brand came before the gym. Mm. So, gosh, it was. I would say maybe 15 years ago. Okay. I actually started my brand right after my mother had passed away. Mm -hmm. And I was always into fitness and doing sports. I was always into just being active. My family was always into being active. A year, two years actually, after my mom passed away, I moved from um, Michigan to Minnesota. And I was very isolated, mm -hmm. like very isolated. And, you know, had just had my last daughter, my third daughter, and fell into postpartum depression. Mm -hmm gained a lot of weight, didn't know who I was in the mirror, and said, you know what, let me get myself together. So got back into the gym. And for me, being in the gym is always more mental than physical. Whatever comes out of working out at the gym, I'm like, that's just a cherry on top. You know, okay. I'm like, it's all more mental and emotional for me. So with all of that said, I thought, I bet there are other people who feel like I do, and that working out is a mental boost. And I just started this community online, good old fashioned Facebook, <laughs> and it was just like just sharing my story of working out and how it made me feel good and as a woman putting myself in the back burner because I had three daughters that I love but at the same time who am I you know Connie um, out of that a photographer took a picture of me and said you look like a ripped goddess and I said you know I don't like to direct the attention to me necessarily I said ripped goddess is an energy it's a mindset. It's a vibe. So I call the community. We're all rip goddesses. So that was like 15 years ago. And it just kind of grew and grew and grew. And I at that point said, you know, why not open my own gym one day? You know, you know, who knows? Maybe I can do it. <laughs> Years went by. I retired from corporate America and just put myself into being the best trainer I could be. And you retired or left corporate America? I left corporate America uh, <laughs> to do my own thing. It was because I was doing great. You know, I was director of human resources mm -hmm. and yeah, I loved what I did. Mm -hmm. But I believed I took a bet on myself. A larger calling. Yeah. And you yeah. walked away from the comfort yeah. of your corporate mm -hmm. position. I did. Yeah. Mm. And I'll never look back. And it is the scariest thing to do. But it's also the most rewarding thing. <laughs> the can, origin can you, story can, of Connie Inch. <laughs> can, 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 can you remind these people how focused, how determined you have to be when you leave a corporate or you want to work for yourself? How important it is to stay oh consistent and like really, really grind. Like, and no matter what happens around you, no matter what's going on around you, you got to stay focused. You do. You can't lose that focus. I mean, there are days where people think, oh, you go into the gym and you work from what, nine to five? 
No, like you, you were. Five to nine. You wake up three thirty, four o'clock in the morning. Five to nine. You don't get home until nine thirty at night. You know you're yeah. there, and then you mentioned earlier you get home and now you do the computer stuff because now you have to do the business it side of it. Yeah. You go to bed and you're thinking, what can I do better? What should I have done to you know, whatever? You're always thinking and working. You're being consistent. You're dedicated. It is your life. It is your life. So. It doesn't stop. Eventually, it gets better because you start to bring other people on. And if you're a true entrepreneur, you really want to see other people grow as well. Mm -hmm. So you grow them to eventually get their own. You want to see people get their own businesses. Sure. And then eventually, you go sit on a beach and you know, collect <laughs> yeah. those checks. We're working, for that part right now, We're working on that part yeah. right now. We're, We're getting, getting there. there. We're getting there. No, the same concept. We're getting there. The origin story of Connie just that fast, and it definitely is a real one. Is yours of a similar sort? Uh, and I, I preface that question because I actually do know him for quite right. some time. I know when he first moved to Georgia. When he first moved to Georgia. 23? 24, yeah, 23, 24. 24. When we first uh, connected. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. I saw that throwback been, picture. Is that throwback? It was alarming. Is that throwback? It was alarming. You've come a long way, it's boy. Been a long like, time, he didn't put on weight. Yeah. He got a little beard. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, he like, got, I got hair now. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't a transformation story in that sense, you guys. Yeah. It's got transformed from NFL early play to where you see him now. So entrepreneurial transformation. Mm -hmm. um, always been an elite athlete, but as far as the entrepreneurial path goes, please, how uh, is this? I feel like it just fell in my lap. And I'll be honest, the brand had, was before the gym. I've had Fineo since 2015. Mm, wow. And yeah, yeah. And I graduated college in, uh, well, sorry, I left college in 2014. I didn't graduate. I left for the NFL draft um, and whatnot, but I've had my brand before any gym. And going through what I went through, you know, leaving college to go try to be in the NFL and whatnot, it really taught me a lot how to not, like, like not give up on yourself no matter what anybody else says. Mm. So failure and option is already a thing out there. Fail, failure, failure is an option, is already a thing out there mm -hmm. in Baltimore, but I patented it, so it's mine now, so relax. <laughs> <laughs> failure um, is not an option. Yep. Fineo. Fineo. Come on, did you that. tell anybody That's about that cool. when you came up with the name? Did you kind of keep that to yourself in the beginning? Oh, well, no, because I, I got it from somebody else. Right. Like, I got it from somebody else in college and whatnot. But if somebody asks me, like, yeah, it's already out there, you could look on Nike.com and they have shirts that say failure is not an option. Right. Right. But the way you put it, the I way I put it, where I put it, abbreviation. Exactly. Um, branded it. it. Yeah, I branded yeah. it. It stuck with me. It stuck with me. Um, going, leaving, the, um, leaving college, going to the NFL. Literally jumping from team to team in one year, getting hurt, tore my quad. Mm. Um, mm. When I left Georgia, when I went back to Connecticut, like we talked about this already, mm -hmm. it was a depression mode where I was like, mm, yeah, I don't know if I want to go outside and see what's up to my friends or just be around them. That's when I really tapped into like, what do I want to do? What do I want to be? Um, my whole life, college, high school, I've been that unsung hero where I worked way harder than anybody else, way harder, even in college. Like I was a captain my freshman year. I didn't start until my junior year, mm. which is crazy. Um, and I just felt like that was who I was. Like, yo, if I could, I feel like if I could help myself get to a place where I feel like I'm the best version of me, then I can help other people do that. Okay. So I just started training. I came to Georgia, mm. you know, I got cut from Green Bay Packers. They flew me back here to Atlanta. I'm like, I'm not going back to Connecticut. <laughs> Signed a college for like, two months, started training, and literally I took what I've been through and what I've learned in my past um, and just ran with it. Uh, training, this business, and just trying to figure everything yeah. out on my own. Like, I don't have a business degree, I don't have yeah. nothing. Right. Like, even with opening a gym. Did I plan to open a gym? Hell no. Yeah. Uh, the opening a gym was the worst decision I've made in my life. I love it, but goddamn. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard as hell. It's so hard. <laughs> but, I did, but it this wasn't. It's real entrepreneur. It's hard. Boy. I love it. But, um. But you got to see it through. You got to see it through. And through, everything boy. that's happened to me, I do not regret. I've lost friends. Yeah. I've lost money. I've watched oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> I've watched it all. You know, um, I've grown personally. Like, mm -hmm. you know, without what, without whatever has happened to me in the past, I would not be who I am today. I, I love but it. But I feel like that's the reason why I am who I am today, because of the things I went through. Yeah. Um, and I want, I want, I want to say I was forced you know, it was just a decision I made, and I was like, I'm not, I can't get a job. I don't have a degree. Yeah. I didn't graduate. What do I got to do? Right. Um, so there was we, no plan B. There was no plan B. It was football. 
it so was failure football. Failure was not an option. Failure was, failure was not, not an option. option. <laughs> so I, did that. I, rocked, I rocked out with it, man. Just, well, I'm happy to see Fennell booming and doing what he's doing crazy, now, man. man. It's real work. And oh, I'm yeah. happy to have had courtside seats the whole time. <laughs> right. As you, baby, uh, made this. Uh, I, 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 I had no idea the relationship. Oh, no. Oh, Rob been there since day one. To me, you had that in way back. Rob been there since day one. I've been here. COVID interrupted us. But I was there. How do we meet at a mutual gym that yeah. he was being a personal trainer at? I was a trainer at Panda. I had a friend who owned Way the gym and a mutual trainer. He was there and just a young guy who was out here getting to it. He asked questions. Mm -hmm. And then beyond asking the question, he's not what I call an asshole. He actually listens. Mm. I say ask whole, which yeah. means you're not giving him answers that just disappear. Right. He takes the answers and run, runs with it, which right. makes you want to pour more into him. Watch him actually enact these things. And I love that about him. And he kept hey, applying it. And literally... What I'm doing now, I've never been happier. Yeah. I, I still wake up in the morning and go get my kids, do whatever I do, and I wake up at 5 in the morning, and I go to sleep at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock yeah. at night. And I wouldn't change it for a regular Happy to be job. I wouldn't change it for an at-home job. I wouldn't change it for none of that because I really love to see other people around me grow, yeah. get better with their bodies, you know, yeah. um, be excited. When they come to my gym, yeah. they're like, oh, they, they, it's like, it's a different feeling when you see the excitement on these people. Even when I see Ron, I mean, uh, MJ come in there. Yeah. Like, he comes in there, and it's like, yo, this motherfucker's serious, bro. Yeah. <laughs> he comes in there, and I'm like, yo, he really loves this gym. Yeah. And I love He's it. doing um, something for him. Yeah, it. It does, but it also does something for me, too. Like, yeah. Love they it. don't know, but... You're a positive but, impact. Yeah. yeah. You're making a difference. I go in my gym, and if you walk in my gym, there's like a little tiny, tiny wall right right when you walk into the door. Right. And I would literally walk in the gym and lean against that wall and just look. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're like, damn. You can see that shit. That shit's crazy. All that struggle you did is was worth it because it crazy. helped them with so much more. I know more that's gratifying. As they fight their own struggles as well. Mm -hmm. Don't you sometimes just feel overwhelmingly humbled by the fact that people are paying right. monthly, monthly to come be at your establishment? I love it. It, it took me a while to understand like what I have. Like literally, mm. I'll mm -hmm. probably say I opened my gym in 2020. The end of 2023, I really started to realize, yo, I got something. Finally, you love it. I'm fine. Hate until then, but right. love that finally would have started to show you something. <laughs> so, just like, like she said, it's why these people yeah. come in there, getting a the membership, paying monthly. Mm -hmm. And they love uh, it. And they love it. It's you part of their life. And yeah. I got my gym that's open till five. Yeah. I got people waiting outside at four twelve. <laughs> we got to be there. Yeah. Yeah. I told my front desk, you cannot be late. Yeah. yeah. Right. They need this. They need this. So, I truly watch myself when I'm talking to you guys, my really close friends, because I have a lot more intimate backdrop to your lives. Right. Um, so I don't want to give your story. I want you to give it yourself. Um, you're definitely one of those, MJ. So I'm going to say this part here. Wink your eye. Shake your head if I'm going too far. Good. But we were friends and admirers of one another for quite some time before we even realized it. Yeah. I'm following him. I'm DMing him. He don't even know I'm DMing him. <laughs> because his account, his account had me going to a separate in, uh, spam type box. Right. And I'm just giving him praise about right. it. Right. I like your content, so on and so forth. When we finally connected, he told me in a story, Ron, I saw you on YouTube and yes. I lost the video and couldn't find the video again until one day I was swiping, swiping, swiping and came across your video. Yes. Your hair had changed. <laughs> I had grown hair since then, <laughs> but your voice was the same. And I knew right. this is that guy. Yeah. From there, we hit it off, connected. He saw those D he saw the DMs finally. <laughs> so stay consistent with your DMs, you guys. Yes. It can pay yes. off. I, I got and then, of that. course, magic was made from there, close yeah. friends. I know a lot more about your backdrop. Yes. I did not know, though, mm -hmm. that you were a working, real nine to five, well, yes. beyond nine to five, working class man, yes. really behind the wheel of real trucks. Yes. If I speak too much, let me know. No. Really working. In recent time, he decided, you know what? I'm going full time with yeah. what I know I'm called to be doing, giving yeah. influence and helping others in a yeah. positive way. Yeah. Bro, when I give you a synopsis, please tell, let everybody know that there's so much more to what got you here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you yeah. for the introduction. Entrepreneur. Um, it's, it's, been, it's been a ride, man, and, and meeting you and, and DJ. And Connie. Um, and Connie. <laughs> Connie. Sorry, and Connie, my bad. I'm and Connie. Just saying. It, it's been a joy. Um, rarely do you find individuals that, that, that are like minded and you instantly connect and it's just it's just a beautiful thing so i appreciate both uh, everyone at this table uh but yeah two decade career driving trucks 20 years um and you know like you guys i i made a decent living i was doing relatively well you know what i'm saying and, and this wasn't this isn't my first stint as an entrepreneur uh prior to that in another marriage i actually owned multiple trucks as well 
So uh, I'm, I'm not new to entrepreneur, but in the sense of now that I own a supplement business, you know what I mean? King Kong, shout out in the Blueprint training app. Um, it, it, it's been a ride, man. It, it's been a ride and, and, and it hasn't been easy. Like you said, it, it's a lot of up and downs. Um, in the beginning, you, you, you're full of energy and love. He's like, oh man, I got this brilliant idea. I'm gonna start branding. And then you launch. And then the real work starts. Yeah. <laughs> the rubber meets the, the, the road. The rubber meets yeah. the road where now it's like you got to work on marketing and, and a plethora of things and, and servicing your customers and your business. And it can be challenging. And being able to manage that emotional roller coaster, it, it can be extremely difficult at times because you're going to have good days, bad days, you're going to have good months, bad months. But being able to manage it and manage your uh, mental health and emotional health is extremely important to have longevity in this game. And uh, one of the things that uh, was difficult for me was being able to wear the creative hat and then the business hat. Mm. Those are two completely different things. We are all creative here, you uh -huh. know what I'm saying? But there is another side of the back end of it called business. Yeah. Black and white. And, and, and that can be hell. The not so fun part. Doing. Right. Yeah. And, and you can get out of control. Yeah. Yeah. Know what you. No There's one sees line. the business yeah. part, that bottom line part. And um, the explosion of uh, King Kong um, really helped me to, to lean or leverage myself into other things, specifically when it came to my business, with the blueprint and other things. So... It, it, it was it was a ride, and I'm really thankful that I took that challenge on because it was something inside of me, being behind that wheel, which I love, and I'm going to get back into trucking in some capacity. But I love trucking. But there were times when I would be on the road where it would be like, I, I literally felt, I know this may sound um, maybe weird to you guys, but it felt like God was saying, you should be doing more. There's more. You, you, there's more. It was just like that's not weird. I think yeah. everyone hears this. Yeah, it's it's, it's like it's a voice, and it was like the things around you. You hear this. Yeah, and, and it was it was soft, and it get, kept getting louder and louder. And a, a lot of you guys don't know, I'm, I'm real big in, in numerology. I have uh, 111 on my, on my hand and I, on my back, and I got 1111 tatted all on me uh, because I, I, when I had started, because I failed. My first brand completely failed on its face. It was called 111 Products. And the reason why I called it 111 Products is because I kept seeing the number 111. Just, it was screaming at me. Right. Literally, on, it could be on my phone, the time, the paperwork, a billboard. So at one point, I was like, well, what is this? Maybe I need to pay attention. So I got on Google, like everybody do. I started re reading it, and it was telling me that I had a bigger purpose and prosperity and you should do whatever it is that you want to do. And I knew I needed to, I wanted to take social media serious and I wanted to start a supplement band. So I started listening, researching, understanding, and then I started seeing 1111. I was like, okay, it's time to go. So I launched my brand all while I was trucking. So I was very strategic. I didn't just jump out the window and say, I'm about to quit my job. First of all, anyone who's looking for a business, do not quit your job. Don't quit your day job. You gotta, do not quit you your big job. It. Don't quit your day job. <laughs> yeah. Major majority of businesses fail within the first year. So trust me, keep your job. And, and the first brand failed. We had to rebrand. I had to go back to the drawing board. But I was determined. You know what I mean? And then I kind of found my people and found my lane and then found social media where I, fa where I fit in. And then it, it, everything just kind of skyrocketed from there. But managing it all is even till this day, man, I've had to, and especially, I'll give you a tip, uh, especially in our community. We don't like to outsource help. Mm. There's going to come a certain time in your business where you cannot wear all hats. It's virtually impossible. You are going to have to pay for someone else to do some work so you can yep. continue delegate to be creative. You have to delegate. Yes, as, you as, as an entrepreneur and a CEO, it's important for you to get people around you that you trust, build a solid team. And uh, I have built a team, you know and I'm saying that is really, really loyal to me, and we work hard and they're compensated, but it allows me to alleviate those small tasks that I don't have to worry about to focus on the creative. Right. You know okay. what I'm saying? Makes so to take that tip. It's important. But it's been a journey. I'm really, really fortunate. King Kong has um King Kong has literally King Kong, literally <laughs> made me retire early and just focus on awesome. being an entrepreneur and a fitness uh, influencer. It's weird to say it still That's to awesome. this day. So yeah. yeah. 
fitness influencer. But you are the but brand, I, though. Right. Masculine man, yes. King Kong makes sense because it makes all sense. your content creation yeah. lends towards being a man. Yes. Who else will sell a male enhancement product besides the man? The man, man himself, man. man. Himself. I love it, man. The man's man. They love it, man. They I, love it. I, I, I love you guys being so transparent and sharing um, your evolution or how you arrived to where you're at. It's oftentimes easy to see. And it's misleading for those to watch and see, okay, the final product. But oh, good God Almighty, there's so much backdrop to arriving there. Mm -hmm. If everyone could understand what the backdrop took to get there, they feel okay in holding or staying steadfast yes. in their pursuit of their own ambitions. Mm. Now, 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 Big Ron, you're the host of the show. Tell us about yours. Yes. What's oh, going on? Okay. Well, <laughs> like, how I met you, I, I, feel like, I feel like I've kind of known yes, you. Yes, know, yeah, thank time. you. I was going to say that too. I don't know how you started. And I just met anything, you. So, 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 I, so what you I, got? I, I will say this then. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 about myself, um, grew up playing sports my whole life as a backdrop to that. Love sports. Broke my ankle in high school or in, in college and couldn't do what I wanted to do, which was hoop. Mm. So I had to lift weights. I forgot I wanted to get the same feeling of, of satisfaction. Right. So my friend Matt Nelson said, hey, Ron, go with me to the gym. What's your gym for lifting weights? This is great. This is cool. It started to make sense to me. The body in motion, which is seeing the body in motion, it made sense. So I stuck to doing it for myself. My first goal was to build muscles because mm. I said, hey, you know what? If I build muscles, I'm going to get some chicks. <laughs> I'm 18 years old. That was, la, 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 la. Right. That, that was, I, didn't I think like that. that was I'm every six, guy's six. I, I, I ain't need muscles. I'm 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> I was 6'3". Six, six. Everybody in this place was 6'6". Six, six. Some six, of us six, got to work. I was 6'3", and I was a basketball player. I'm playing basketball. <laughs> right. So I'm just a stick man. Right. I'm a stick man. <laughs> if I had some muscle, I might get some tricks. Right. And that drove me, and that's what worked. But after a while, I realized, you know what? This makes sense, and what I'm doing can help others. Mm. We'll fast forward a few years here. I applied the same knowledge I used to improve my own self as a bodybuilder to some stay at home moms. Mm. And they found themselves feeling better about themselves. They found identity because they found purpose. Mm. They were no longer just simply stewards to children or, 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 or caretakers to, um, to their parents or, or taking care of a home. They found themselves finding themselves and working out. I also discovered what dose was, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, yeah. mm. endorphin, feel good hormones. Mm. And I said, you know what? If I keep applying this with these ladies, these ladies, excuse me, they'll pay for it right. mm. because they're like, you know what? This guy makes me feel good and I'm looking better. Right. And then it launches. Get there goes up. the Ron Jones brand. Oh, uh, excuse me. Ron Jones, the trainer. Right. But I'm still a body. What year was this? This is graduation post 2006. 2006. 2004. Yeah. So I'm in, shut up. <laughs> I'm in person. I hate it. I hate my friends. Um, so I'm, I'm training I can't in say person. Anything. <laughs> I'm training in person um, and everything's going well. And it just so happened, dumb luck, I came to the internet just before COVID hit. Mm. I was also devising a, devising a program at the same time to train from home yeah. with another company. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Mm -hmm. So everyone's confined to home. God and I good. happen to have a program mm -hmm. that helps you train from home. So it catapulted. And from there, that's what you see Ron Jones doing. So when I started creating content, it was more so me telling you guys free information. For sure. Because that way you know there's more information here. So I kept pumping it out there. And because of the abnormally high viewership on social networks, I had a chance to show you I have a plethora of information to help everyone. Right. Because I'm a trainer. And what I'm selling is wellness. Right. And who can't use wellness? Right. Everyone. Young, old, black, everyone. white, menopausal, yep. teenage, whatever. So I was dishing information out. And it all stemmed from my initial career right. as a personal trainer, mm -hmm. just regurgitating what I knew to help other people out. Over time, I got better at doing so in 59 seconds, mm. the length of a reel, which is where we are now. In right. fact, I just synopsed my whole life. In you really, minutes. really did. <laughs> so, that's good. Yes, hey, that's that's good. good. You know, what, you know what's interesting about that? The more and more I learn about, about COVID, so many people were burnt. <laughs> were birthed like they found COVID themselves because, yeah and, they did and i feel some type of way about yeah. this because i was an essential worker i was outside working driving trucks delivering while all of y'all were blowing up on the internet <laughs> but i love it i yeah. love that, that 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 because I, I obviously covid was um, not a great time for everyone right but it, it's, it's interesting how God positioned my gym, my gym opened in COVID. Right. But look where you are now. COVID, but look, how, look where you That would have been yeah. like someone to say, you owe me a general COVID. Oh, that was a disaster. Yeah, yeah. But, but, look, but look where you at. <laughs> right. Look what you did. Look what you did with yeah. it. I, I just find that so extraordinary, man. Like, 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 like what you guys were able to do 
during such a, a pivotal time yeah. in our nation yeah. or in our world. You yeah. know what I mean? The you know, earth. You know, You're right. I know the earth went through it. This is a little off topic, but what, what I'm inter what, what interested me is like I am around so many people that are much older than me. And I look at your life, you done told me not about much your life. Older, not much older, but older. Yeah, man, why are you older. trying to put like nah, numbers on my age, dog? Like, what's he up? Listen. Right at me. No, I, I, I said, but listen, <laughs> corporate. Yes. Trucking. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You know, you had the other, you had the training, so. I don't know like here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't been here for But long. for me, it was like, where am I going to be at when I'm um, 38, yeah. 35, 36? And it interested me because I didn't go through um, corporate or any of any. So my story mm -hmm. now. It's still evolving. It's still evolving, but yes. I want to make sure. Y'all well, motivate me to make sure I'm not telling the same story five years from now. Oh, mm -hmm. I love that. I want my story to be much Bigger. New yeah, chapters, new books. Stay in the course, so, man. Yeah. I love it. And I really appreciate y'all. Yeah. On the shoulders of your friends and family, you'll, and family, you'll stand. It's crazy. On the shoulders of your that. friends and family, you'll stand and go on to greater things. Sure. I feel like a toast is This totally <laughs> seems to be <laughs> so this is be off gear, you guys. But I gotta ask this question before we close everything. But I gotta ask this question, you guys. Yes. Here we go. Off gear. Zodiac signs. Oh my oh. gosh. Is this accountability absent? I am a Leo. I am a Cancer. I'm a Sagittarius. Are you simply washing away the fact that you still have personal accountability mm. for the fact that you can't help it? This is part of being a whatever said zodiac sign. That's or is this really that. something that's much larger and is it truly clandestine? Come on, Mr. You have 11. no idea <laughs> you what's know about this. Because I truly know. Oh, no, I have to use my, my first personal thought on this. Yeah, go ahead, um, please. I, I, I hear you. so many people talking to rocks. <laughs> manifesting and, and thinking about this stuff so much. Talking about rocks is crazy. Not, <laughs> oh, it yeah. took me a second. I thought you meant to Wayne Johnson. I'm no, sorry. No, to rocks. <laughs> Literally <laughs> talking to rocks. I was like, we're talking to um, the rocks. Okay. So, but it feels as if this zodiac sign concept, which seems to be a topic of discussion so it much, is. I am a such and such. This is my behavior. Right. Are you truly just simply not being accountable because you can actually control your own actions? Instead and it's of not blaming simply your, Blaming your zodiac, zodiac sign? sign. I, yeah. Right. right. Are people blaming their zodiac sign? Well, my yeah. zodiac sign has all very good attributes. I'm a uh, Virgo. So you lean into the good attributes. So I lean into that we are very detail oriented mm -hmm. and we're per perfect. Virgo. <laughs> <laughs> detail oriented and perfect. perfect. You know I mean? we're, we're perfect. Perfect. So I can't blame it on it. It just is what it is. Leans into it. I'm leaning all the way into all right. it. Well, I'm Virgo, a Virgo. That was a good discussion. Yeah, man. That's perfect. crazy. I, 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 numerology, yeah, it's a little yeah. different than, than zodiac signs. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, when I hear people talk about it, it's kind of cringy. I think it's weird. Um, zodiac discussion. Yeah, uh, but when I hear my attributes when it yeah when they're discussed you'd be like that's me i'm like damn that's me <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so, just, hey, so it's really like so, so like sometimes this, yeah. i have this love and hate there might yeah. be truth right because i'm yeah. a leo it, 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 we seem to be we we the worst you know i, I am very uh, arrogant and cocky at times yeah. i think i'm the shit I, I i i all those different things you know there was a time when i was very promiscuous and truth. you know i used to be a liar they called us lion leos some of those <laughs> yeah, things yeah. were very true yeah. you know what i'm saying so sometimes but then you know i'm kind of like at the end of the start of doing research I'm, I'm, I'm telling myself about it because i was yes. curious I find that some of the attributes that I, I, I share are actually because I'm at the end of a Leo. You're trying and a to Virgo. sleep into a Virgo. So it's like I'm you wanna, Virgo. Yeah. So I feel like I'm the dopest. <laughs> I'm the dopest. I am the dopest of them all. I'm the dopest. <laughs> like what, what can I say? Like like I am that guy. You're that like, guy. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like what's up? Okay. So DJ says no one likes no, you. Like Please me. tell me who. What is so your who are you? I'm an Aquarius. Okay. I don't know Aquarius. what it means. I'll be honest with you. You're but very different. If I tell people, yeah, a female. Hey, I'm a crash. She'd be like, oh, I ain't messing with you. My last ex was in. I'd be like, what I do? It's well, it's very unique. Tell us. What, what, okay, so what, what is, is an Aquarius? They're unique. My daughter is an Aquarius right. as before, well. Before. Yeah, they're like a, a day apart in their birth dates. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just very different creatures. You know, unique. Snappy? I'm going to use all those words. Unique, different. Snappy? She's dancing around a lot. I am. Just say what it is. is. Let, me, let me know, because I truly, I truly don't you. know. It's just crazy when everybody says. I don't know many says. Aquariuses, honestly. You know I do know her, and she's and she different. Was, she was definitely. <laughs> yeah, right. Artistic, creative, but very unique. Like, they do not give a 
Okay. Is that does that sound trends. like you? They, follow, they don't not follow trends. They don't That's follow. They're follow themselves. They, they what is that? Uh, march to the beat of their, their own drum. drum. Yeah. Very much that way. Are you like that? So uh, I'm definitely yeah. not trendy. I not trendy. Care about trend no, all, they don't care about any of that. Well, you're but for six, me, six. you can do it. Exactly. That's that's so that's go ahead and talk, talk your ish. But for me, um, I don't know what in the craze really is, but I've heard like we're very snappy and we have bad attitudes. Mm. Um, <laughs> I do. You do? I was I going do. to say, you don't um, seem like you have. No, but it's like, I'm a, trust um, me, I am a person who will ride or die for you. Loyalty is crazy, but as soon as you go on that bad side, yeah, I'm the worst person. I'm the worst person you'll ever meet. Like, I'm the worst person you'll ever meet. Wow. And I, and I hold grudges. <laughs> and I hold grudges. I hold grudges. I hold grudges. <laughs> I hold grudges. You're not petty, though. I'm not petty. Okay. I can be. I can hit below the belt. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know who you are. Yeah. So you feel like, so thing. Leo's, we feel like, sure. we're not petty. It's like, you don't deserve to be around me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. We are petty to the petty. We are disgusting. Like, <laughs> we we know. We're disgusting. We know. We really want to know, uh, what is your sign? And based on the characteristics Which that one? they say are clandestine to who you are, himself. are they true? Are these signs truly who you actually are? If we want to know, please talk to us in the comments. You guys, another successful episode of the Practical Podcast. I got to top this glass off for you. Yes. Let's definitely send another shout out to Rick Ross, Sovereign, Sovereign Brain, Brain. Bel Air. Brain. We are super happy to be sure. here doing what we're doing. Practical Podcast. Successful. Cheers. Cheers. Eyes, 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 oh, eyes, 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 eyes,